adventurers. My name is Sarah Grendler and I'm an author illustrator on the west coast of Canada and today I'm going to be reading one of my books to you. But before we begin that I just want to give a big shout out to Nimbus Publishing for working with me on this project. It was an absolute dream and a great adventure. So let's hop into the book Seaside Treasures, a guidebook for little beachcombers. And if you have your own copy you can get it out and read along with me. Seaside Treasures, a guidebook for little beachcombers. A day of beachcombing is a day filled with salty sea air, enchanting seashells, and exciting discoveries. The ocean holds so much beauty and adventure, and it leaves so many treasures on its shores. Let's explore these seaside treasures. Have you ever gone beachcombing just after a storm when the tide is out? Exciting pieces can get washed ashore, some that you would never expect. Some of my favorite treasures to find are purple sea urchin shells. Urchins are round, spiky creatures that sea otters love to munch on. The beach is often covered with other colorful, iridescent, and interesting shells, like mussel shells, sand dollars, and snail shells. What do you think lived inside each of these beautiful shells? If you collect a shell, make sure there is no one home. Another of my favorite treasures to find is blue sea glass. Sea glass can be found in many colors and some are rarer than others. Blue is not found as frequently as other colors and it could, it could have come from old food jars or medicine and drink bottles. Have you ever found any? Another rare color of sea glass is purple. Some pieces are from old purple bottles, but softer lavender colors were actually once white or clear glass. If the original glassmaker used a chemical called manganese, the sun slowly turned the glass purple over time. Isn't that amazing? Other hard to find sea glass colors are red, orange, and yellow. You can find pieces of green, brown, and white glass more easily. What is your favorite color of sea glass? These are glass fishing floats. Fishers began using them almost 200 years ago to keep their nets afloat. Some are the size of tennis ball, while others are as big as a pumpkin. Even though they are one of the least common treasures you can find, they still wash up on the beaches today. These three were found in northern Japan. What, what would you do if you found one? Around the southern Gulf Islands of British Columbia, you can find Coast Salish artifacts on the beaches. In Atlantic Canada, there are sometimes Mi'kmaq, Maliseet, and Beotuk artifacts hidden in the sand and rocks. Indigenous people made all of these tools long ago. What do you think they use them for? These are pieces of chinaware and silverware that were lost in the sea. What kind of dish do you think each piece is from? I think I spy a teapot. Do you wonder who might have used these? Perhaps sailors, merchants, or pirates? Amongst all the treasures that wash upon the beach, you can often find garbage. When I find garbage, I collect it to help our oceans and beaches stay clean. Can you spot the garbage on these pages? Treasure hunting at the seaside is such a joy and is always full of surprises. Now that you know about sea glass, chinas, chinaware, shells, and garbage, let's go back and look again at all the pictures in this book. Can you tell which is which? Do you see any sea urchins? Can you guess what other treasures may have been?
Just imagine what you can make with all your seaside treasures. And then when you are finished, you can return to the beach and hunt again. What will you find? Thank you so much for watching and listening, of course. And remember, you don't need a beach to go treasure hunting on. You could go treasure hunting in the woods. You could go treasure hunting in your backyard. You could even go treasure hunting in your own house or your imagination, which is even better. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Until next time.